Hi everyone, welcome back to Project 2845. Since we have our 6AH4 gain stage working well with its constant current source, I wanted to take some time and run some measurements to figure out what the AC impedance is of that constant current source, as well as its actual voltage headroom requirement in order to regulate our desired current target. So this drawing here shows the test setup I've currently got implemented on the bench where we're using the high voltage power supply and biasing our constant current source. Here I've drawn it just sort of as a black box as an idealized constant current source uh, with a high side and low side resistor. This node here with this 22 microfarad capacitor allows us to isolate the DC operating point from our audio precision and actually inject a test signal onto this node here from our AP. Because our constant current source operates uh, and has really high impedance uh, when it's in regulation, the AP should effectively see just this 1K ohm resistor to ground. And that's why we need this 1K ohm resistor. If this was just a, uh, a short from our power supply, the AP could not inject a signal onto this node. On the low side, our goal is to create a voltage divider between the constant current source impedance and this 1K ohm lower resistor. So if our audio precision test signal appears on this node, based on the impedance of the constant current source, we'll get a smaller divided signal on this node. And again, I'm using another 22 microfarad cap to isolate this node and then measure just the AC signal into our audio precision. And I've already run some tests around this and it works uh, extremely well. The one caveat is, and what seems to rear its ugly head over and over again is the AP's input capacitance. As we've discussed multiple times, the input capacitance of the AP is 220, uh, sorry, 270 picofarads. So 270 picofarad load in parallel with this 1K resistor at high frequencies will present a low impedance and, eventually, and essentially change our voltage division ratio at increasing frequency. So we need to be careful about this test and looking at the um, exact impedance we'll measure of our constant current source at very high frequencies, but it should at least give us a decent approximation and give us an idea on, on how it's going. These are just the, the simple math to figure out our impedance of our constant current source, but this is the voltage divider ratio essentially we have with the 1K lower resistor and the series combination of the unknown constant current source impedance with our fixed 1K resistor. In rearranging this equation, because we'll measure the gain with the AP, we can compute the impedance of the constant current source. So that's the idea. So here we have our bench set up uh, with just the physical connections on what I was showing with that test diagram. Our high voltage power supply comes in through this red lead here to the high side of our first 1K ohm resistor. It's hard to see in there, but there's a coupling capacitor on the low side of this 1K ohm resistor, which is our injection point. This yellow lead takes the low side of this high side 1K ohm resistor to the high side of our constant current source. And then the low side of the constant current source with this white wire is attached to our other 1K ohm resistor. And here on the low side of the bottom 1K ohm resistor, we've got our ground reference point for our power supply, our injection signal, and our measured signal. And on the high side of the bottom 1K ohm resistor, we have our 22 microfarad coupling capacitor, where we're measuring the signal that we develop across this resistor due to the signal that we injected over here across this capacitor down in there. So I hope that makes sense. I'm not using the audio precision yet. What I just wanted to show is the regulation of the constant current source. So right now I've got it set up in regulation. I'm measuring with uh, the multimeter across our high side 1K ohm resistor. As you can see, I'm measuring 15 volts. 
So 15 volts across one kilo ohm is 15 milliamps. So right now, our constant current source module is in regulation, and I've, adju and I've adjusted the trim potentiometer to give me 15 milliamps of current. If I get my screwdriver in here, it's a little hard to, to get it exactly in, there we go. I can adjust my current 14.8, 14.5. So I can adjust my current to within a window based on the resistors I have in that module to set my current to wherever I need it for any of my vacuum tube stages. So right now I'll just leave it there. 14.99 slash 15 milliamps. Now with that high voltage power supply, what I can do is I can adjust the bias for a constant current source by turning the voltage knob on our power supply. And what I can do is I can watch when our current collapses. So if I turn the knob slowly, and you'll see the meter jump a little bit as the voltage drops. But what I'm looking for is the point at which we come out of regulation. So I'm turning the knob slowly down. And the meter jumps because of the output capacitance of the power supply. As the voltage drops, the power supply will actually consume some current in reverse until the voltage is stabilized. So that's why the meter is jumping around. If I keep turning there, it looks like... Nope, still haven't hit it yet. Still haven't gotten there. There we go. So now you can see, you can't see me turning the knob on the power supply, but as I turn the knob, there's like sort of a one-to-one -one ratio in the current across the 1K ohm resistors and the voltage as I adjust the voltage down from our power supply. So what I'm going to do is find the point at which it just comes into regulation which will be that 15 milliamp number, or 15 volts, which is 15 milliamps across a one, or 15 volts across a one K ohm resistor is 15 milliamps. So I'm increasing the knob. And I think we're about there, we're a little bit off. but it's not increasing anymore. So the bias point might have drifted slightly. But uh, what we can do is then now measure the voltage directly across the constant current source. 9.22 volts. So with approximately 9.22 volts across the current source, so from input to output, we then get regulation for our 15 milliamp bias point. Now, if you remember from some of the tube analysis we were doing and when I was drawing on some of the curves and doing load line analysis, I estimated 20 volts of headroom. So this seems to be doing a little bit better than that and is somewhere in the range of maybe six to nine volts, depending exactly how I measured it. And I have measured this at a couple different operating points, but it seems to always be within that range where we need nine, six to nine volts across this constant current source to maintain our current regulation. And that does hold true at different current levels within a pretty wide range. So that seems to be pretty consistent. So now I'll move back to the audio precision. It is hooked up as, as described previously. And now what I'll do is I'll run some measurements at one kilohertz and calculate what the impedance is of our constant current source. The output signal is 1.03 volts RMS and the reason I have 1.03 volts RMS is due to a little bit of uh, loading because of this 1k ohm load that the AP effectively sees and so and I'll just show that actually. I'll move my measurement, my AP measurement input to actually where I'm injecting the signal.
and let me just do that. 0.994 volts. So with 1.03 volts input, we're very close to injecting a true one volt RMS signal. Now, it doesn't have to be exactly one volt RMS. We can actually pick other values to inject and may do so if you know we need to improve noise relative to the noise floor we can measure with this setup. I can inject two volts or, or whatever I want. But this is handy because I can set, if I know I'm injecting a true one volt signal, I'll set one volt as my dB reference. And I, therefore I can refer this low side measurement node relative to the one volt I'm injecting up here. So if I know this is one volt and it's maintaining one volts across all frequencies and I verify it has, then all I need to measure is the loss relative to the one volt automatically by the AP on our input channel. So if I move my probe or, or the input channel back to the measurement point, We can see minus 50.68 dBr is the amount of reduction in signal we're measuring on this low side at our AP input. I'm using this, our amplitude measurement, rather than the level measurement, because I can put a narrower bandwidth. I can put it in the audio band. And the reason I want to do this, I mean, I just have this set up on the bench, and this does pick up some noise and some 60 hertz hum. And our power supply down here may not be putting out a completely clean signal and may be noisy in high frequency ranges. Um, so just to avoid all of that, I'm gonna use the amplitude section of the audio precision measurement window within 10 to 22 kilohertz. And these numbers do diverge a little bit, especially as um, the performance improves, and I'll show that in a second. But right now we're getting minus 50 dBr. So if I move to the calculator and use the gain equation we established earlier, I need to convert the dB into a linear gain. So 10 raised to the minus is 50.6 dB is what we're measuring, divided by 20. That's the gain. That's this value. So we need to take one kilo ohm, divide it by that gain number, and then minus one kilo ohm. So 1K divided by a second answer minus one kilo ohm. 337.8 kilo ohms. That's the impedance of our constant current source. Now that's rather low and we'd expect this to be in the mega ohms for most of the audio band for good performance. So why is this low? Well, let me reset our meter. The voltage across our constant current source is only 9.26 volts. This answer changes as I increase the voltage. And I also just realized I had the meter across our constant current source for that test, which is invalid because the meter in parallel with our constant current source is a leakage path. The meter being 10 mega ohms will effectively appear in parallel with the constant current source impedance. So if I just remove the meter, we gain about a dB, not significant. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase now the voltage of our power supply. And because we're in regulation, any voltage I add in terms of bias from our power supply will be developed directly across the constant current source. The 1K ohm resistors will maintain 15 volts across them because the current is constant. So 59, 60, 63, 64, 67, 70, 71 dBr. So I just adjusted the voltage on my power supply to some unknown amount. 
and we can see the rejection improved significantly compared to where we are where we were before let me take my multimeter and now I'll connect it back across the constant current source to see what voltage gave us this improvement 25.25 volts so I now have from input to output 25.25 volts across the constant current source and you can see how much that improved. Actually right now you can see the effect of the meter. This was 71 dB before. With my meter across it it's now at 67 dB. So let me remove the meter so I'm not measuring the voltage across constant current source anymore. There you go, 71. You can see how it jumps up. So as the performance of the constant current source improves and its impedance becomes higher, the leakage of the multimeter matters a lot more. So you have to be, we have to be careful of that. So let's run this math again at 71 dB. So we'll do 10 raised to negative 71 divided by 20. That's our new gain, that's a linear gain, so we converted dB to a linear gain number. 1,000 divided by that gain, minus 1,000. So you can see, 3.5 mega ohms. So we went nearly 10x. 300 K in the previous example, to 3.5 mega ohms in this example. So the operating voltage across the constant current source has a big impact in its performance. And so what this test setup will be, allow me to do and with the AP is run a few different sweeps, not only at one kilohertz, but versus frequency, four different target currents and varying voltages across the constant current source to see where it's most happy and where we get the most performance. So I'll run some of those tests. Um, you know, I won't do that on video because that'll be kind of slow and tedious, but this will give you the idea on how to do that. Um, and like I said, I'll caveat that at higher frequencies, and I think I mentioned this earlier, we do need to be careful because the AP input impedance and capacitance will change our voltage division ratio and give us a slightly different answer but it should still get us in the ballpark um, and give us an idea on how this performs. And what we want is ideally, you know, many hundreds of kilo ohms to ideally mega ohms if possible, all the way from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. And so we can run some sweeps and uh, with the AP and get that data. Thanks for watching. I hope this was useful. Take care.